Not only do we find multitudes of transitional species all throughout the fossil record, we also find within currently living animals a great variety of evidence displaying ongoing transitional processes. For example, homologous structures, vestigial organs, and even tucked away within the genetic code. A common theme within evolutionary biology is descent with modification, which is evidenced by observing anatomical similarities between species grouped in related taxonomic categories. For example, many mammals such as humans, cats, whales, and bats have closely related skeletal elements that make up their forelimbs, although these appendages have very different functions. In their defense, theists often claim God created life according to a plan. Therefore, it is not surprising we observe similarities in anatomical structures between different species. Although this might explain the similarities between the forearms of primates and humans, surely the best way to design the infrastructure of a bat's wing is not also the best way to build a whale's flipper. Such anatomical particularities make no sense if the structures are uniquely engineered and unrelated. The forelimbs, wings, flippers, and arms of different mammals are variations on a common structural theme. Similarity in characteristics resulting from common ancestry is known as homology, and such anatomical signs of evolution are called homologous structures. Comparative anatomy is consistent with all other evidence in testifying evolution is a remodeling process in which ancestral structures that function in one capacity become modified as they take on new functions. Biologists are very concerned with structure and function. For instance, the structure of the stomach serves the function of digestion. However, all throughout the animal kingdom we find structures within animals that have no apparent function. Non-functional structures are known as vestigial organs, the historical remnants of structures that once did have important functions in ancestral organisms. Anti-evolutionists often claim a loss of anatomy is not evidence for evolution, where one might expect to see the emergence of new and beneficial structures. However, vestigial organs do indeed provide concrete evidence of natural selection, because it would be wasteful for the body to continue to provide blood, nutrients, and space to an organ that, as a result of evolution, an animal no longer requires as part of its physiology. Natural selection tends to favor individuals with reduced versions of such organs, thereby phasing out obsolete structures. If you've ever seen a skeleton of a blue whale, either in person or in a picture, you may have noticed two relatively small bones precariously hanging off the back third of the skeleton. These bones are actually remnants of the pubis and femur. However, many ancestral whales such as Durodon and Basilosaurus still displayed their hind legs that, over time, became progressively reduced in size. As discussed in episode 7, the benefits these appendages offered were so negligible that eventually their descendants lost them entirely in the effort to become more streamlined in the water. In fact, the only reason modern whales even have a pelvis at all is because these bones are still utilized in the birthing process. Keep in mind, even though the whale's pelvis is reduced, it would not have been beneficial to lose it altogether, as in the case of their hind legs, because because only useless structures are discarded by natural selection. However, bones are not the only evidence that whales once walked on the land. In the mammalian embryo, limbs first appeared as little buds on the sides of the developing animal. In fact, many species of snake and legless lizards such as the slow worm initially display limb buds in their embryonic development, only to reabsorb them before hatching. In the same regard, modern adult whales, dolphins, and orcas do not display hind legs, even though hind legs complete with various developing leg bones, nerves, and blood vessels temporarily appear in the cetacean fetus and subsequently degenerate before birth. As can be seen in the example of the dolphin embryo, where the circled hind limb buds develop, grow, and then once again become reduced. Sometimes these rudimentary hind limb buds are observed to persist longer in the embryos of humpback whales and dolphins, which may explain the rare occurrence of the external hind limbs found in the fully matured animal. We also find vestigial structures within cave-dwelling animals. The Mexican tetra is a fish that lives in complete darkness. Although it is blind, the tetra still contains a rudimentary eye with a lens, sclera, degenerated retina, and optic nerve. Evolution makes the prediction that the ancestors of the Mexican tetra made the lightless caverns their home, and over time, natural selection favored tetras that diverted blood, nutrients, and space away from their eyes that were no longer used. In fact, this is exactly what happened as there are many other species of tetra that live in open water that have fully functioning eyes. The same process is responsible for the blind Texas salamander, who has also lost the ability to see due to the absence of light in its natural habitat. However, there are other species of salamander that still live on the surface and hence have retained their sight. We also find vestigial structures within plants. 
The dandelion, like all flowers, contains the proper sexual organs necessary to fertilize the other members of its species. However, dandelions exclusively reproduce through asexual reproduction. Dandelion seeds are produced without pollination through an asexual process known as apomixis, resulting in offspring that are genetically identical to the parent plant, that is, they are clones. The dandelion contains the same organs used in sexual fertilization found in all other flowers, such as the stamen, pistil, and even its pollen, all of which are viewed as vestigial structures within the dandelion because they are not utilized in any biological application, neither for the originally intended function of sexual reproduction nor for any other conceivable purpose. Certain species of the whiptail lizard of the genus Nemidophorus only exist in the female sex. Although this might seem like a problem when it comes to propagating the species, females do not require a male for reproduction as they engage in parthenogenesis, a form of asexual reproduction where an unfertilized egg develops into a new individual. Despite the fact these lizards reproduce asexually, some female lizards try to act like a male by mounting another female in the fetal attempt at copulation. Because these lizards evolved from a species that reproduced through sexual fertilization, the unnecessary practice of engaging in fake sex is viewed as a vestigial behavior, a remnant of their ancestral nature. Both reptiles and birds lay eggs. The emerging young use either an egg tooth to cut through the leathery eggshells made of keratin, as found in lizards and snakes, or they use a specialized structure called a caruncle to crack their way out of hard eggshells made of calcium, as found in turtles and birds. Mammals evolved from a reptilian-like ancestor. Placental mammals like humans and dogs have lost their egg tooth and caruncle, and yes, we have even lost our eggshells as well. However, monotremes such as the platypus and echidna are primitive mammals that have both an egg tooth and a caruncle, even though the monotreme eggshell is thin and leathery. Even more striking is what happens during the embryonic development of marsupials, which express transient eggshells that are later reabsorbed before live birth. Although they have no need to hack through a hard eggshell, several marsupial newborns such as the baby bushtail possums, koalas, and bandicoots retain a vestigial caruncle as a clear indicator of the reptilian egg-laying ancestry. We also find vestigial structures within insects. There are many examples of flightless beetle, such as the weevils of the genus Lucanidae, which retain perfectly formed wings housed underneath fused wing covers. There are also many varieties of flightless bird, such as the ostrich, kiwi, and penguin to name a few, whose ancestors were once able to fly. Take for example the penguin. In regions of the world accessible to land-based predators such as the Arctic, birds like the little auk, which very closely resemble the penguin, require the ability to fly not only to find food, but to escape predation. However, on the remote continent of Antarctica, which is inaccessible to land-based predators, the ancestors of the penguin were free to move along the ground as they pleased, encouraged to spend more time hunting in the water than in the air, and thereby modifying their wings once used for flight into flippers that now allow them to swim. All of the examples discussed in this video can be explained in terms of structures which have been left over, reduced, or modified from the original organs found in the animal's predicted ancestors, and humans are of no exception. Please continue to part two of this episode where we will examine in detail the many vestigial structures found within our own bodies.